Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Maayong aga sa inyong tanan. Uh, marahay na aga sa mga Bikulani. And of course, good morning to everyone. My name is Ryan and I am the Admin and Finance Manager of PPSA. And I will be your host for today's session po. Well, actually, this is our third installment of our um, Usapan series. In April, we talk about coffee in featured Nestle Philippines and had a conversation about regenerative agriculture and its potential to boost the future of the coffee industry. At kung kapi po ang usapan um, last month, last session natin no, ng usapang series, ngayon naman, pag-uusapan natin kung paano makakatulong ang mga makabagong invention and innovation to maintain safe and fresh ang pagkain sa ating hapagkainan. From harvest, from farm, to our table. Okay po, so kaya naman in partnership with our member, Anihan Technologies, we organized this learning session, Usapang Agri-Innovations, addressing food loss through agricultural innovations. To highlight the, con uh, the, contri the contribution of technology in advancing and empowering the agriculture sector, especially in addressing challenges in the value chain such as food loss. I am sure magiging masarap ang usapan natin ngayong umaga kasing sarap ng ating pagkain kung alam natin na safe and fresh ang ating kinakain. Ano po? But before we start, uh, we have some reminders for everyone po. First, this session is being recorded. Okay, good morning po. <laughs> uh, para sa ating mga na nasa Zoom, may I request to... Um, to rename our uh, from organization school or or company and then dash your name okay po third is please remain on mute po okay while our speakers are presenting should you have any question po please chat on the box below and some of our team uh, will read your your concern and your questions later okay po um if you have experiencing any technology difficulties while on the zoom please chat Again, on our chat box. Okay, nandiyan po ang ating team. And last but not the least, gawin po nating safe, happy, and light lang ang usapan nating umaga. Okay po? So, to formally start this session um, and introduce our featured organization for this learning session, please welcome the Partnership and Engagement Manager of PPSA, Ms. Jade Herrera. Ms. Jade, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Rai. Uh, good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us in today's uh, Usapan uh, series. Uh, in, I, I, I noticed that we have some friends from, from abroad. So just to give context, Usapan means a conversation in, in English. So for today's session, uh, we will talk about uh, innovations on food loss. We know that we are in a world where hunger and mal malnutrition persists. And it is disheartening to know that approximately around one third of the food produced globally goes to waste. And the consequences of food loss are dire. It means that countless people go, to hu go hungry every day. And it also puts a strain on our planet's resources, especially on environmental degradation and also contributes to climate change. And with zero hunger as one of the sustainable development goals, addressing food loss demands our attention and calls for immediate action. But first, we have to understand that food loss occurs at every stage of the supply chain. So as Ryan mentioned earlier, it starts from production to consumption, and it can happen due to inadequate harvesting techniques. Perhaps it's because of lack of proper storage and even transportation facilities, or maybe there are inefficient distribution systems. And in developing countries like the Philippines, um, post-harvest losses can be devastating, especially to our small farmers, and it also perpetuates a cycle of poverty. However, we believe that there is hope and that agriculture innovations can play a role in reducing food loss and ensuring a sustainable food production system for our growing population. So there are already innovative solutions on improved farming practices and even climate resilience, as well as efficient storage and transportation and value addition and processing and even consumer awareness and education that can help address the challenges that we face when it comes to food loss. But in today's Osapan Agri Innovations, we will get to hear from one of the new members of PPSA, the Anihan Technologies or Anitech, who will share with us how actionable data on, on storage quality and food loss can help monitor 
environmental conditions, and at the same time, optimize your supply chain from production up to the post-harvest stage. So we hope that Anitech's presentation will spark inspiration and engage you in conversations around this topic and perhaps jumpstart partnerships and collaborations in building a more sustainable and equitable future where no food is lost and where no one goes to bed hungry. And the potential of our agriculture sector and our farmers are fully realized. So everyone, uh, please join me in welcoming Jillian Santos, the founder and CEO of Anihantec. Jillian? Thank you so much, Jade, for that introduction. So I'll just share my screen. Oh, I'm sorry. I think the uh, share screen feature is disabled. Okay, there. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yeah, so good morning, everyone. My name is Jillian Santos. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Anitech and we provide agribusinesses with the hardware, software, and actionable data needed for crop quality management to combat food loss. So just to give a little background about me, when I was at DLSU or De La Salle University, I actually graduated BS Physics, minor in economics, and went straight on to being a researcher and market validation officer for multiple grant projects for five years. And during the pandemic, um, the dean of the School of Economics back then actually asked me to be part of their consulting team for the National Food Authority when the R when RA-11203 or Rice Tarification Law was passed. So uh, during the time that I was in that contract, I saw a lot of the systemic challenges and bottlenecks in the rice industry. And it really kept it really kept me up at night and made me obsessed about the entire agricultural value chain. So right after that contract, that's when I wrote my other co-founders to think of solutions. And eventually, we found ourselves joining startup competitions. So I guess the rest is history from that point on. So this is our team. I have with me Anthony Santos, who's actually my brother. So he's the head of research. Uh, Daniel Torres is our COO. And recently, we also got uh, Angelo Santalian, our ops coordinator. So we actually know each other from, well, of course, my my brother, I know him personally since we're family, but the rest of my co-founders, uh, we know each other because we were blockmates at La Salle. So we're all graduates of uh, physics with varying specializations from material science to economics. So while we don't have a very in-depth background in agriculture, our foundations in physics actually help us look at the industry from a different perspective. And also we've worked together in numerous research projects for different sector applications during our time in La Salle. So we know each other's strengths and weaknesses and, um, you know, the whole pace of building, iterating, pivoting, and validating innovation comes second nature to us. So I guess before I talk about what exactly Anitech does for the agricultural sector, I want to share with you all why out of all the problems and bottlenecks that the agricultural sector is, you know, facing, we focused on food loss. I actually get this question a lot of times when I present. And we can start with defining what exactly is food loss and how it differs with food waste. So the technical definition of food loss and waste as stated by the FAO is the decrease in the quantity or quality of food along the food supply chain. But the key difference between the two is that food loss happens at the production and post-harvest stages while food waste occurs at the retail and consumer stages. So here in the Philippines, we produce more than a trillion, trillion pesos worth of high-value crops every year. And as these crops go through multiple stages, we lose about 40% of these crops. So that's almost half of what we produce. So almost half of what we produce gets lost before it even gets to the market shelves and individual consumers like us. So it's no secret that our entire value, agricultural value chain is broken and fragmented. A lot of the information in the news out there says that we lose crops due to lack of infrastructure, which is also true. But more than that, it is actually because we lack the data and the information we need to make critical decisions when needed. So whether you're a farmer or a wholesaler, your agribusiness is expected to deliver fresh food to consumers all while being profitable. But this can only be achieved if you have the proper crop quality management systems in place 
and the ability to gather and act on crop quality data. So take, for example, monitoring environmental conditions. Many journals and stakeholders out there credit environmental stress as the primary cause of crop losses worldwide, reducing the average yield for major crops by more than 50%, and it's becoming even an even greater issue in the coming years due to global warming. Without the ability of knowing even just the, com the environmental conditions in real time, you will not be able to implement uh, reactive canopy, irrigation, and nutrient management practices in your farm, or even adjust, let's say, the storage conditions of your warehouse to suit the environmental requirements that your crops need. So this now leads into poor and subjective decisions being made, such as the excessive use of inputs, overstocking, or mixing fresh batches with spoiled batches. So for our team, reducing food loss is cheaper than just increasing production. Ms. If Gail, we want... Ms. Oh, yes. Sorry. sorry to interrupt, ha. Pero I think yes. there's a, a box uh, sa side ng presentation mo sa monitor namin. Oh. Yeah. I'm and, so then, and then sorry. sa lower, kaya hindi nakikita yung buong presentation actually. Ayan. Here. Yeah. Um, yeah, is isa it? pa. Yeah. Tanggal mo pa yung mga... <laughs> sorry. Yan. Yes. I, uh, I'm so sorry. I think it... The, there's a problem with my my zoom it, but I'll try fixing it. Mm. Yeah, wait. Maybe I could go to the PDF file na lang. <laughs> there. Is it better? Yes, Miss Jail. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Where was I? Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, for our team, reducing food loss is cheaper than just increasing production. If we want to create a more sustainable food system, agribusinesses need to be more efficient in managing crops at each stage of the supply chain. They need to be able to shift away from manual tracking and move to more innovative and digital solutions that provide them better visibility on the ground in order to make better decisions. So that's where we come in. Anitech provides high-value crop growers and distributors a tech-enabled service for storage and crop quality management. So our service has three key elements, um, hardware, software, and actionable data. And we also take care of the installation, maintenance, and training for our users. So our hardware is composed of IoT-enabled sensor systems that can be installed in any type of greenhouse or warehouse. So this collects and remotely monitors significant ambient data that affect crop quality and yield, then sends it onto our platform. So currently for greenhouses, we built a sensor system that could monitor carbon dioxide, temperature, humidity, and light. While for warehouses, we built a sensor system that can monitor carbon dioxide, temperature, humidity, and oxygen. So we can collect data every five minutes or at a time interval that the users may require and we also have the ability to back uh, all of this data via an SD card. But in any case, all the data being collected gets sent onto our platform to be visualized. So our platform is actually web-based. It visualizes the data from our sensor systems and you can access it on any smart device. All you have to do is log in. So through it, we could provide multiple dashboards showing users real-time data and underlying trends. So currently, we can do line charts, bar charts, heat map table, device a device map, a values table, a sensor and device table, and show also the real-time values uh, per sensor. So through our hardware and software, we can provide users with actionable data in the form of summary reports and early warning notifications through SMS and email to make better supply chain decisions. So if, let's say, your greenhouse or storage facility is experiencing heat stress or uh, any other type of environmental stress, we can send a warning alert to the user via SMS so they can act in real time, like turning on their misting equipment or opening their ventilation equipment. We also take care of the processing and analysis of the data collected and converse with our users on how they can manage their operations better. So through our service, farmers and wholesalers will have a better visibility of their operations anytime, anywhere. We can pinpoint how, why, and where you're experiencing food loss and help you develop and implement efficient supply chain management practices that's fit for your business. And in the long run, we can help you save on operational costs, reduce food loss, and be more competitive by distributing more 
through spending less resources. So our company uses a hardware and software as a service business model. So we initially charge 20,000 pesos for our greenhouse sensor system and 32,000 pesos for our warehouse sensor system. Then uh, for our subscription fee, we charge 500 pesos per sensor per month to access our platform and actionable data features. But since we're in the pilot stages, this pricing model is still subject to change. And we also give packages and custom quotations for clients who buy sensors in bulk. So currently, we can service greenhouse growers and fruit and vegetable wholesalers in Region 3 and Region 4A, but we plan to eventually expand into other regions and other stakeholders, such as crop exporters, processors, and manufacturers, and even food logistics companies, to tap into that to our Philippine fruit and vegetable market valued at 402.6 billion pesos, and in the long term, tap the entire Philippine crop market that's valued at 1.06 trillion pesos. So one of our use cases or uh, paid pilots that's currently ongoing right now is with Harvest. So they're, um, they're high, they started as a hybrid seed distributor, then ventured out into offering a series of other types of agri products and services. And they have over 2,500 greenhouse projects and counting all over the Philippines. So for that pilot, we actually installed five units in their 400 square meter greenhouse in Tai Tai Rizal. Um, we've actually conducted four site visits, I think six right now if we count uh, April and May. Um, we've also collected more than 100,000 data points. Uh, we've sent about six to eight data reports as of this May, and we collect uh, data every two minutes. We've also sent out 50 SMS alerts um, to their farmer and engineer tasked in their greenhouse. Our second paid pilot that we actually just recently closed was with Grain Pro Philippines. So they they specialize in ultra ultra hermetic uh, technology used for storage and transport and drying of grains. So they actually have a sensor called EcoWise that that senses CO two temperature and humidity, but they experience a lot of downtime. There's no data storage backup, and um, it uses just Lorawan, so it it's not um, applicable to any other type of network connect IoT network connectivity. So um, the the partnership there was uh, to do a nine point five pilot and integrate uh, two modified sensor systems to their five metric ton cocoons. So um, for that 9.5 months, we aim to do the modification of our sensor system, the development of the, our, our platform to suit their needs, the enclosure design and development of that cocoon cap that we could integrate into their cocoon as well as lab testing and cocoon testing. So at, at the early stages, you know, for any tech to scale, we plan to reach out and close customers through building partnerships for one-to-many distribution. That's exactly the reason why we partnered with the PPSA because we want to be able to have access to multiple agri stakeholders and create market awareness through webinars such as this um, and other face-to-face -face, uh, seminars and exhibit booths at agri-related events. So we're also very open to partnering with other agri-industry players for product and service bundling and lastly, definitely, we plan to seek support and partner with government agencies that can help Anitech be involved with uh, making agricultural policies and practices, food safety standards, as well as roadmaps. So back when Anitech was at the ideation stage in 2021 and our country was on complete lockdown, we actually based the concept of you know creating these food loss reduction technologies with the work my lab did back then. Um, at La Salle. So my co-founder and my brother, Anthony, um, we worked together actually for five years with my with my father. My father is actually a tenured scientist and also the R&D advisor of Anitech. So he's the primary inventor of a low-cost nanomaterial production process. So in order to continue his work for the past two decades, uh, we actually decided to apply the concept of his nanosensors into agricultural applications, such as meat spoilage and uh, monitoring the spoilage rate of bananas uh, during our time in the lab. So we actually also tried applying for a research grant under DLSU, but we took it a step further and joined uh, our first competition, Tech Planter Philippines and Asia, last May and August 2021. So uh, when we started winning, we actually used the that prize money 
to interview other stakeholders, to develop a closed sensor system, and eventually create the first version of our uh, platform as well. We also competed at uh, for the Ecothon Philippines uh, back in November, and uh, it led us to develop the second version of our of our prototype and turn Anitech into a incorporated business. So last year was actually the year where we got to move more freely since there were no more lockdowns and it allowed us to achieve several milestones such as joining three incubation programs. We managed to also test that second version of our, of our sensor systems by conducting free trials with Farm One and MKP Incorporated. And eventually we got to secure early stage funding from Foodie Box Group Malaysia and Levenes Capital before the year ended. So this year has also been quite eventful for us, even though it's still May, due to the two paid pilots we secured with Harvest and Green Pro, and we're targeting to secure at least 10 more early adopters by the end of the year. Right now, we intend to allocate our time and resources um, to making improvements to our solution, to capture large volumes of data through our pilots, and establish product market fit. So in terms of our product roadmap, Right now, we're more focused on adding farm management dashboards to our platform so that users can manually input their daily activities, expenses, and other types of operations data so that they have all the data and the records in place when they apply for certifications such as the fill gap. So this coming third quarter, we're also, uh, we'll, be also, we'll also be doing internal tests on adding Soil sensor, a soil sensor system that can monitor temperature, humidity, and moisture, which can also complement our base unit so that we can compare ambient data with soil data. And by the fourth quarter of the year, or early next year, once we're more uh, liquid and we've raised our seed funding, we'll resume to conducting more lab trials to accelerate uh, the technology readiness level of uh, the nano sensor system that me my brother and my father once worked on back at La Salle. So this nano sensor system will be able to detect not only the spoilage rate of fresh produce, but also the VOCs or volatile organic compounds and pesticide levels, which could be applied for QA testing or maximum residue pesticide level testing. So as we leverage more data from our users, we can generate more value propositions. And in the long run, Anitech aims to be this entire ecosystem that can help from analytics to extending shelf life and even as far as adding other types of sensors and agricultural extension testing services. So yeah, I think my, my presentation ends right there. So if you have any other questions or if you, if you feel like there's an opportunity for us to collaborate, please feel free to contact me uh, either through my mobile phone, my email, or, or through LinkedIn. So thank you, everyone. Ayun. Thank you, Miss Jill. Akala ko may kasunod, may kasunod pa yung, yung presentation mo. Sorry. But, yeah. Uh, disclaimer, I'm also not used to uh, presenting for more than 30 minutes kasi, because of startup pitch competitions. I'm mas sanay ako na five-minute pitch. <laughs> <laughs> pero siksik at liglig. Pero, yeah. pero thank you pa din uh, sa presentation mo na hindi naman ganun ka high-tech, no? Grabe. Yeah. <laughs> mm -mm. So, I tried uh, reducing technical jargon. <laughs> <laughs> Nakakatuwa lang talaga actually na ano na nasa era na talaga tayo ng ng when it comes to agriculture na may kailangan talaga natin ng technology na no to achieve this ano agricultural uh, some problems that we encounter lalo na sa baba. So, yun and and I hope yung yung sa Philippine agriculture sana ma-adapt natin at maging ready no ang ating mga farmer, mga farmers when it comes to that so okay at hindi lang yon pati mga agri players at mga consumers sa tulad natin uh, preventing food loss in the Philippines malaking tulong to okay saludo kami sa inyo Miss Jill at sa team mo no at sana marami pa ang ma-inspire ang agritech na ma-explore ang digital agriculture bilang solusyon sa mga problema natin sa sektor no at dahil nga sa usapan ito we will now move on to another exciting part of the session so please welcome PPSA Communications Officer, 
uh, Ms. Susie Hope Vanidad to facilitate our Q&A portion or the question and answer portion ng session na ito. And I know ang some of us na naanjan sa atin ay may mga may mga questions na no na nakahang and nakapark. So this is about time to answer those questions. So Susie, gana umaga. Thank you so much, Sir Ryan, and thank you so much then, Miss Jillian, for your presentation. Bilang person na hindi science yung utak ko medyo ako makatch up sa presentation <laughs> niyo, but I'm sure um, it sparked a lot of interest from our participants. So, sana po ay maraming uh, paang ma-inspire to take a chance to pursue their passion like uh, what Anitek is doing. So, while also helping the vulnerable sector sa ating bansa. Kaya wag na po nating patagalin. Let's bring back uh, Ms. Jillian for the Q&A. So feel free po to input your questions sa ating chat box at itatanong po natin yan kay Ms. Jillian. So hello again Ms. Jillian. Kamusta naman yung session natin? Yeah, pretty brief but I, I'm thank you so much to everyone who um who's listening right now. Uh, it's it's not very often that we get an opportunity to speak and share our story with mm -hmm. the agricultural sector. Mostly we present to investors and other um, tech innovators. So th this is a really great opportunity for us. So we have some questions coming in now. So before we ask those questions, I we're curious to know na, ano, na, so you started in 2021. So when Anitek first started, what were the biggest challenges naman po that you encountered? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I, I think um, the biggest challenge in starting an agri-tech startup was, you know, during the pandemic was, you know, the lack of contact with, with the users, with our market. So I think when we when we started this, we, we were just, uh, even with our contract with the, N my contract with the NFA, I was still also just imagining how it would look like on the ground. <laughs> so when we were developing the sensor system, we were thinking of different iterations. You know, working at the lab isn't the same as when it works when you do a pilot test prototype. It, it, there could be a lot of challenges. For one, the stability of your Wi-Fi connection, the stability of your sensor components, all of that you need to stress test before you, you do the pilot. So for a startup in the ideation phase with no resources, funding, or connections in the agricultural sector, that was really hard. So the first step for us was really getting our name out there and joining every competition and joining every agri-related event that was, you know, readily available and what, you know, what we could find on the internet. So second, yeah, it's the access to funding and resources. You know, compared to tech startups who offer SaaS solutions, if your startup has a hardware component like ours, it's more capital intensive. So even if you want to iterate or to pivot, you know, different features, it's not that easy because that, that would mean you'd have to order different types of components. You'd have to order different types of components coming from abroad and then you'd have to do the develop it again and stress test it. So yeah, I think that that was the struggle and it's still our struggle right now as an early stage startup. But we're getting, uh, because of the early stage funding that we got from Foodie Box Group Malaysia and Libanese Capital, it eases the burden of having to play around and test different types of components. Also, um, the, the, you know, the fact that we had no name or reputation in the agricultural sector at the time, it was hard for us to find people who are willing to be users of our solution and much less listen to us because Yes, we're you know technical people, but we're we we're not licensed agriculturists. So that that was the struggle back then. So we had to really learn a lot about the agricultural value chain. I think I've read, I guess, the DA industry roadmaps around like three or five times when it was released. So just to you know, um basically encapsulate all the problems and all the bottlenecks that the value chain is facing, because you know, um, what we realized uh, even at the start and still until now was you can't really um, create a one-size-fit-all solution for the agricultural sector just because it works on this type of crop or this type of region doesn't, or this type of, of supply chain stage doesn't mean that it will work for, for every region and every crop and every supply chain stage. So I guess, um, yeah, that, that's the struggle and that's the reason why we continuously have to do uh, market validation. We continuously have to have this high-touch relationship 
with with the farmers and the wholesalers and see what are the common patterns or the common data that we should be seeing in order to combat food loss. We don't even have a food loss information system here in the Philippines. Africa does. So yeah, it would be great to have the opportunity to be able to do something that Africa did. So there's a lot of preparation involved and also uh, putting yourselves out there and um, inviting people to take a chance on you then. So yes. we see a lot of suggestions in the comments in the chat box here, but a lot are interested and are curious to know if you have built any partnership with the government or LGUs. And there's even a suggestion, if a question, if you're willing to engage with DA for an exploratory meeting. So a lot of opportunities here in the chat box. I say yes to all. We're, we're free to take a meeting anywhere within Luzon. <laughs> we're an early stage startup, so medyo ano pa yung Visayas and Mindanao, but we'll get there eventually. We'll definitely get there. curious sila malaman if you have any partnerships with the government right now or LGUs. None yet. Hopefully this year. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah um, I think uh, we have been invited to exhibit at the DA at the event. I think it's called the Harvest Festival Day on May 31. So hopefully it's our chance to meet other agri stakeholders. But of course, since we're already here and we're already engaging the conversation, I'm definitely open to a virtual or face-to-face -face exploratory meeting with the DA. I actually just live in Project 6. It, it's just like a 10-minute walk to the DA. I think for me. someone confirmed from DA. Uh, he said yes. <laughs> from the answer, Eugene. From the chat box. Thank you so much for Ms. Jill. No? So we have a follow-up question. So in your experience working with the farmers here in the Philippines, ano naman po yung major concerns na na raised or the challenges na nakita ninyo when you started introducing your technology? Yeah, okay. I think the number one challenge that we really face right now is some or most most farmers don't know what type of data to collect. They're like, okay, we have this base unit right here that monitors CO2 temperature humidity. And somehow they think it's easy for us. Oh, can you integrate PC and pH and, and all of this barometric pressure? And, and while all of the data is very essential, don't get me wrong. Uh, one thing that you need to note is for every sensor that you put in in our base unit, that also increases the cost. That also increases the maintenance of the data and the data storage that you have to back it up. So yes, um, I think for, for us, that's the reason why we had to create this base unit first so that we could at least um, lessen the cost and the prices of our sensor system. Eventually, yes, right now with our product roadmap, we are eventually um, integrating soil sensors um, to complement our base unit. But we can't do it all in one go. Number one, it's also extremely expensive to maintain inventory. And that's why we're right now, our struggle is we're a made-to-order company. If, you, if, if we undergo a pilot with you, we also have to site visit because we want to get to know your farm better, your operations better, and your team better so that when it comes to uh, when it comes to adopting or implementing the technology, it's uh, it's a good fit. The, our worst nightmare is to give, you know, a sensor and data and just, you know, throw it at you without, without, without knowing how to process or analyze or be able to make better decisions because that's, that's the struggle with a lot of IoT companies early on, especially in, in Europe, in, in Japan, South Korea, that's how they all started. And, and, you know, I would like to lessen or reduce that risk of failure of tech adoption. And another thing is, of course, definitely the the I guess the 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 lack of skill set in order to process that data. I mean, the farmers do know that temperature, humidity, and all of these other conditions are very important to monitor and track. But it's also how do you correlate that data with irrigation management and fertilizer? So um, it's also a constant struggle for us because, like, if you saw our founding team, we're all we're not agriculturists, so we would love to partner with um, farm builders or farm consultants, or maybe also in-house our own agriculturists. Definitely in the near in the near future, um, in order to correlate that data better. 
So yeah, I hope that answered the question. So clearly po, no, marami pang opportunities to collaborate and to help out uh, what you do. But uh, based from our chat box, a lot of our participants are rooting for you. So exciting times for Anitech. So keep your questions coming po and we will answer that later. So this next question naman, um, I, uh, I'm interested to know, how can people um, address food loss naman at a household level? How can regular people like us contribute to this, to solving this problem? Okay, yeah. I guess at the at the household level, I think the best thing for us individual consumers is yeah, um changing our mindset with the way we think about food. So, um in in a more specific sense, it, you know, it, what I mean about that is as consumers, we usually want the best and the most perfect looking fruits and vegetables in our tables, but you know, buying imperfect or oddly shaped fruits and vegetables doesn't mean that the crop isn't edible. So another that's also another major reason why we lose crops at the first half of the supply chain. It's because of this, this physical appearance or this aesthetic st standard that farmers and wholesalers have to always meet. So for you know, for us at Anitech, as long as the weight and the biological factors of the crop are up to standard, then the crop is still good for processing and consumption. So yeah, sometimes. Uh, I'm I'm a victim to this, you know. Before I even considered uh working for the agricultural sector or working with uh, you know building Anitech, I I'm also a victim to this. I usually want the best looking lettuce and and tomatoes. So yeah, when I look at the market now, no, I, this this is good as long as there there's minimal minimal bruising and um and it's still good to go. Yeah, I I would still buy. That, that type of imperfect produce. Thank you so much, Ms. Jill. I think that's a very good advice, especially sa ating mga picky eaters. Let's not discriminate our food if you want to contribute to food loss. So I would just like to acknowledge some comments here and suggestions from our participants. So uh, Ms. Eva Benita Tuzon said um, they agree with you on data gaps in many aspects. And then Sir Toto Barcelona from Harvest also said that sensors and nanosensors are beneficial for farmers and logistics companies to monitor fresh produce and prevent food loss. Ayan. So see you down, sabi ni Sir Eugene sa May 31. Then we yes. have suggestions then from Mom Eva. So she suggests you start having exploratory discussions to catch up with forthcoming budget deliberations or lawmakers' current sessions, improving policies related to agriculture, rural development, and all the best from Mom Eva. So a lot to take thank into so consideration, much. but thank you so much po, for your suggestions, Ms. Jillian. We have more questions. Um, please keep them coming po. If meron po kayo mga tanong, uh, you can send them to us, the chat box pa rin, and we will try to answer them through our learning session report that uh, we will try to share with you. So ipaparating po namin yan kay Ms. Jillian, and then we can hopefully share with you all. So if wala po tayong tanong for now, um, over to you, Sir Rai, and thank you so much po, Ms. Jill. Thank you, Ms. Jill. Uh, may I request everyone to open our camera for our group photo po. Yung, yung stable ang... Ka, ang, ang... Ang network and connection, yung hindi, okay lang na nako off. Pero as possible, may I request to open your camera. So we have to... Okay. Uh, you have disabled the camera. Hindi kami. Uh, <laughs> okay, Sir Eugene. Okay. Count of um, three. One, two, three. Smile. Hold on. Ayan, may humabal pa. Si Sir Toto. Hi, Sir Toto. Okay, smile. Okay, one more time. Save ko lang po. Okay, next. Next screen, smile. One, two, three. Ay, nakahabal si Sir Neil. <laughs> Thank you. And last request po, uh, uh, kindly uh, answer our question, survey uh, question. So I'm launching the poll. Ayan. Nakikita nyo po yung, yung, yung question, yung evaluation question namin. 
for this session. So the first question is just did the event meet your expectation? So yes or no? I I hope naman no. <laughs> yes. Okay, the second question is what was your impression of the speakers that the topic? Good, very good, average. And the, the last question is uh, were you satisfied with the overall event? Very satisfied, somewhat satisfied. Sana naman walang not satisfied. <laughs> Okay po, uh, at least uh, we have 51% na who's answering the, the our evaluation. And I, I hope at least 70%, I, I guess. So 65, 68, 70. Okay, okay, thank you. So I'm going to end uh, the question now. Maraming salamat po. And now... Um, thank you, Susie, no? Thank you for the, the Q&A portion. Sa mga nag-participate po at, at may mga question pa, mag-chat lang po kayo at isi-send namin yan directly to Miss Jillian no? later on. Okay? Um, to share with us the a synthesis of the Usapang Agri-Innovations, we will call on Miss Monica Milano, our PPSA Programs Manager. Miss Monica? Thank you very much, Sir Rai, for the introduction. So um, I also wanted to say thank you then to Ms. Jillian for her time today for sharing with us about Anitech as well as Anihan Technologies. It was very inspiring and a big kudos to you for taking on the challenge of um, sharing digital te technologies or solutions for agriculture. So just to share a bit about a summary of our activity this morning. So one of the biggest challenges that the agri-industry faces is definitely food losses. As Ms. Jill had mentioned earlier, we lose almost up to 40% of what we produce, which is mostly due to the lack of data or information to help our farmers um, make informed decisions and make better supply chain decisions as well. So an additional challenge faced is also helping farmers really understand what type of data is needed for their farms to help them make that informed decision. So today, um, we have Anihan Technologies sharing um, their discussions as well as their background, um, that they are a startup that are geared towards addressing food losses in the country through the digitalization of agriculture processes. So during the session, Ms. Jill had highlighted the differences between food losses as well as food waste, wherein food losses is more geared um, towards on the end of the suppliers, the farmers, the processors, wholesalers, and packers, while food waste is more on the consumer end. And this is where Anihan, come, Anihan Technologies come in, wherein they aim to address food losses since, um, as she mentioned earlier, it's a cheaper approach compared to increasing production. So um, it's along the lines of like work smart, not harder. Nga naman. <laughs> so leveraging on these digital operations or solutions through their farmer software, um, hardware platforms, and actionable data, this assures our farmers have consistent update on the farm. So this includes their climate information, soil technology, um, soil health information, etc., to help improve their farm operations through informed and data-driven decision-making opportunities. So in addition to this, she also shared that they have plans to expand their operations, hopefully to tap the whole Philippine crop market, as currently they're still um, within the Luzon area, and they are very open to partnering with both the private and public sector. So we saw earlier that we had a lot of um, mentions in the chat box wherein we had people from the DA as well as interests for partnering with the, with the LGU. So um, yun po, you have a lot of opportunities here, Ms. Jill, as well as to these different um, sectors. And they also have plans to add more features such as far farm dashboards, soil centers, as sensors, as well as lab trials for food quality nano sensor systems. And lastly, I guess on our part as consumers, we too also can help reduce food losses. So as she mentioned earlier, we shouldn't really judge a book by its cover. If um, a fruit looks a bit bruised or if a crop or if there's a bit of browning on the lettuce head, we shouldn't immediately um, pass on as consumers on how we can help reduce food losses. So that's all. Right. Thank, Thank you, Monica. I think na wala yung connection mo kanina pero okay naman. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay, no problem. Okay. Um. Thank you. Um. That ends today's learning session po. And thank you, uh, everyone, for attending today's session. Maraming maraming salamat mo. Mula sa amin puso from the bottom of our heart. 
Maraming maraming salamat po. This session is brought to you by the Philippine Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture and Anihan Technologies Incorporated, Ms. Jillian Santos. Um, guys, see you again in our next usapan session in June. June na po, next month na. Um, our next usapan session will be on uh, the topic of coconut naman po this time. So we hope to see you too in that session. At uh, sana ganitong vibe pa rin and participation no, to our next month. So samuli, thank you so much and good morning and have a great week everyone. Thank you so much po sa lahat. Happy lunch po. Thank you to everyone. Ayan. May participants pa ba? Wala na. Thank you, Miss Jill. Congratulations. Congrats, Jill. Congrats, Jill. Oh, Miss Jill. Thank you daw, Miss Jill. Sabi ni Richard for ano, helping poor uh, farmers. Maraming salamat daw. Miss Jill. Transcript po ba tayo nito? Baka yung suggestions pwede natin isend. Mm -mm. Then yung recording naman yan, nare-record yung chat. Ah, 